Good morning, sisters. Happy Friday. Um, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to be able to spend some time with you this morning in the Word. Um, <clears throat> I can't believe it is already mid-July and summer is rolling along and almost over. Um, I don't know about you, but with all that has been going on um, in these past few weeks, I definitely have been feeling a whole range of emotions from sadness to fear and anxiety. Um, and I'll be sharing a little bit more about that. But to begin with, let's start with a prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much, God, for being our perfect Father. You are our Abba Father who cares so much about what goes on in our hearts, what we feel, what we think. God, thank you that um, you are so much greater than than ourselves, God, that we don't have to rely on our own strength, but we know that you are doing a good work before us, God. And so I just pray that your Holy Spirit would work through me to be able to um, just preach your word, to be able to draw out encouragement and hope from your scriptures, God, because we need that so much today. We love you. Thank you so much for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. So I did want to start off um, just sharing about all that I have been learning as far as race relations and just really coming to grips with my own complicity in systemic racism. And it's been very sobering, very convicting to see my own sins of fear and selfishness, how, you know, I've realized I've been caught up in my own bubble not really wanting to be involved in areas of social justice because it really didn't affect me. Um, I could see my own fears of not wanting to speak up or being afraid because I worry about what people think um, instead of standing up for God's righteousness and God's justice. Um, so I've been praying for opportunities to repent and get involved in areas that God is calling me to be involved. And I did want to share just how proud I am of um, the sisters in Torrance. Um, there's a group of moms, Ari Garcia, Joy Downing, Beverly Bryant, Tiffany Nelson, Keolani Alejado, um, and some others as well. But just how they are really stepping up and reaching out in the community, reaching out to build bridges, for example, with the Torrance City, City Council members, um, also meeting with uh, North High Principal, North High School Principal, as well as West High School. And um, I'm just grateful just to be able to work alongside with these sisters, to be able to really bring God's kingdom and God's heart into the communities for diversity and for more representation. I want to give a big thank you to Bobby and Renita Henley for really leading the squad team. Uh, the squad team in our church is the social, cultural, uni unity, and diversity team. And I want to thank those who have volunteered to be on the squad team to help us as a church to repent and be better in making sure that every person is treated with love and respect as God intended. I really love our church. You know, we are not perfect, but we love God. We love each other. And where we see we have made mistakes. I love that we can have honest conversations with each other to be able to listen to each other and repent. Um, I'm so grateful for my black brothers and sisters who have graciously shared their life with me, their stories with me, to help me understand the reality, the hurtful reality of racism. Your faithfulness to God and your heart to be willing to forgive and love despite um, all of that is, to me, just inspiring. Um, I'm grateful for our non-Black brothers and sisters who are willing to be humble and have those uncomfortable conversations so that we can learn to be better allies, so that we can stand up for social equality and really help build those bridges of peace and unity. And um, as I continue to unlearn my racist thinking and repent of my own sins, I am committed to continue to listen and educate myself on how to, um, to be anti-racist, to be able to stand up for justice and for peace. Um, 
But if I'm honest, there have been days when I have just been overwhelmed, um, even discouraged and depressed, just feeling the weight of this worldwide evil. Um, There have been days when I would break down and cry, just heartbroken hearing the stories of what um, Black men and women have endured uh, for many, many years, hearing their stories of racism and prejudice. And, you know, at times that I would pray and ask God, you know, for wisdom and guidance, um, I would think things like, how are things going to change in our country? You know, it just seems so, such a daunting task. Like, where do I even start? Um, I started to feel like I'm not doing enough. Like, I got to, I feel like I got to do more. Um, and then, you know, there's also the reality of the health crisis that we're in, the, the rise in the COVID-19 cases um, that has led to more shutdowns and closures. Um, honestly, I was hoping, as I'm sure many of you, you know, we're hoping to be able to start to be able to maybe meet together in the near future, maybe in small groups. So now with this rise in COVID case, num- you know, COVID number of cases, I felt just this feeling of despair and like, I don't know if I can keep doing this. Um, For many parents out there, it's a scary time and it's a stressful time trying to figure out whether our children should go back to school in the fall or or should they stay home and continue online learning. Um, It's been very challenging for many children and teens to be isolated at home and not being able to have that time to hang out and socialize with their friends. Um, And yet the threat of the spread of this deadly virus is very, very real. So it's it's challenging trying to navigate, like what is the right thing to do? Um, I thinking about the moms who have little ones at home, I can't imagine, you know, just the constant taking care of their babies and little toddlers running around and not even getting a break. Um, Not to mention how all this anxiety and stress can add tension and stress to our marriage and family within the home. Um, I do want to lift up our amazing singles who are braving through this pandemic, encouraging each other and continuing to serve each other despite the loneliness that they may feel. I know for some, there can be a lot of anxiety and fear about continuing to, you know, have to go out to work. Um, or some, you know, have that financial worry, um, for those who have lost jobs, um, or lost hours, grief for those who have lost loved ones due to the coronavirus. Um, and I don't mean to sound all doom and gloom, but it is just the reality of emotions that we can feel as we face life right now. And um, I'm grateful that we have this time as sisters to be able to come together, even though even though it's virtually, because, you know, I know that we can relate to all these different emotions. Um, have you ever felt like, I wish I could do more? I feel like I should be doing more, but I just don't have the energy, like I'm just dead. Um, I think about this time when I was trying to get on you know, this Zoom call, it was probably like my fourth Zoom call for the day. And I didn't realize that my phone was nearly dead. So I'm like running around on the Zoom call, running around, um, looking for my charger, trying to plug in. And this actually has happened more than once. And sometimes I get to plug in on time and other times I don't. And then I just get dropped from the call because I'm too late. Um, So I don't know if you can relate to that, you know, feeling that flatline spiritually, Or maybe you struggle with thoughts of insecurity, like, am I doing enough or am I enough? And I want to encourage you, sisters, that all those are signs to plug into our source, to get away with our God and get refreshed and get restored in our souls. You know, many of you, I know, wear several hats of responsibilities at work and at home. Um, You continue to give and serve in our church. And I just want you to know God sees all that you are doing. God sees all that you are feeling. He hears your cries for help. And he says, come to me, all you who who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. 
Amen. That's in Matthew eleven twenty eight. God gives us this gift of Sabbath rest for our souls. So I want to talk a little bit more about this. You know, I first learned about the importance of Sabbath rest a few years ago when I attended a Mothers in Ministry conference that was hosted by the Turning Point region. And I give credit and a huge thank you to Tracy Miner for her teaching about this, as well as from the Bema podcast and lessons from Marty Solomon. I want to share with you some of what I've learned and really what I'm still trying to put into practice. And I hope that it will encourage you to do the same. So let's start from the beginning of creation. Turn with me to Genesis 1 in verses 1 and 2. So in Genesis 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So it says that the earth, or just creation, it starts with nothing, really. It says earth was formless and empty. And then, right, you go on in the chapter, and it just describes how God continues to work. He starts to work and create for the next six days. He made day and night. He made the sky and the land, the ocean, the plants, the stars and the moon and the sun, birds, ocean creatures, animals. Then he made man. He made man in his image. And then in Genesis 2, verses 2 and 3, it says, By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. And God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. So after all the work of creating, what does God do? God just rests. You know, um, Marty Solomon in his first lesson in the Bema podcast does such a fantastic job describing all the um, amazing nuggets in the Hebrew language that we can draw from this chapter as he goes through the creation story. And um, just as a side note, I really love learning from the Bema podcast because he teaches from more the Eastern perspective and um, teaches a lot about the Jewish, Jewish culture which I was totally unfamiliar with, and um, just how it's more family-oriented, you know, just really emphasizes more community living. The language is so rich in meaning, uh, more poetic oftentimes than literal. And it just really is such a contrast from what we are used to in our Western thinking, which can be more in individual, uh, where we tend to focus on results and like need an answer. Um, focusing on that more than relationship. And, um, you know, one is not better than the other, but I feel like we do need both to be able to get a fuller understanding of all the scriptures. So I encourage you to check it out. That's just a side note. But to continue on the creation story, um, Marty does share how the center word in all of this. So in this passage, if you go to the very center word, um, it is this Hebrew word called moad, which means sacred time. And moad, it's one of four words used to describe the Sabbath. Now, why is this important? Well, you see God's heart in all of this, that God's, you know, the very first lesson God wanted to teach his people was that your value comes from who you are, not from your what you do, not from what you produce or the results that come from your work, but just for who you are. In um, Genesis 1, 31, remember that uh, it says, God saw all that he had made. So after he had made man, he says, and it was very good. So after, you know, all the different things that he created, it says, it concludes with saying, God said it was good. But after he made man, he said, it is very good that you are the crowning moment of all of his creation. And as God rested to enjoy his creation, can you think about that? Like, why did God rest? I mean, it's not like God ran out of 
creativity or that God needed to rest, like how we need, we get weary and tired. But no, God rested to just enjoy his creation. And he invites us to rest, to enjoy our relationship with him. God invites you to take a break, to be able to rest in him. And so that you will remember just how much he loves you and he values you for who you are. I just love that. In uh, Exodus 20, let's turn here. Um, So the Israelites began this spiritual practice of Sabbath from their journey out of Egypt all the way as they traveled to Mount Sinai. And here in Exodus 20, we see here how it became official law. So Exodus 20 verses 8 through 11 It says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Did you even know that that, you know, the call for Sabbath was the fourth commandment of the Ten Commandments that God gave to Moses um, for his people to learn how to live God's way? You know, I know for myself, this was really eye opening, like I don't even think I really, I didn't hear the lesson until I was already like 25 years as a disciple. And honestly, it was the first time I had heard any lesson on this topic of the Sabbath. And, you know, I, do I dare say, even in the kingdom, it was like, we just kind of put this commandment on the side. I mean, I know I certainly had ignored it and dismissed it. You know, all the other ones we know, the heart of do not have any idols before God, honor your mother and father, do not covet, do not steal. Yes, you know, we should not do that. Take a Sabbath rest? It was like, no, I don't think we really need to do that anymore. That was probably for long ago. Besides, there's too much to do for God. You know, we have souls to save, Bible studies to do, um, you know, service projects to organize. I mean... Now that, you know, when I realized this, I thought, oh my goodness, I was so convicted at how arrogant I was to think that it was okay, that it was just okay to dismiss this command. And really what I needed was this rescue because I didn't even realize how burnt out that I was getting and how my soul was crying out for relief. Um, Let's turn over to Exodus 31. So this, I am just honestly just scratching the surface of this whole topic on Sabbath. I mean, I know I need to do much more deeper study on it. Um, I hope that this will pique your interest and inspire you to want to do your own Bible study. Um, But here in Exodus 31, in verses 12 through 18, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, You must observe my Sabbaths. This will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come. So you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. Observe the Sabbath because it is holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it must be put to death. Whoever does any work on that day must be cut off from his people. For six days work is to be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day must be put to death. The Israelites are to observe the Sabbath, celebrating it for the generations to come as a lasting covenant. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he abstained from work and rested. So, wow, this is intense, right? Um, The Sabbath really was to be a sign between God and his people. And a remembrance that he is the one who makes us holy. You know, it's like God wants, you know, wanted to lift this burden off of us to try to be perfect. You know, that 
he's constantly trying to remind us that he is the one who created us. He is the one who is making us holy. And I think of, you know, observing this um, Sabbath. I mean, that's pretty intense, like how important it was to God that, you know, if you didn't observe it, that, you know, you would be commanded to be put to death. Um, and thankfully, we under we live under grace and, you know, that Jesus came to fulfill the law. But I still think, you know, it it just benefits us to be able to embrace the heart of God in why this was so important for him and for his people to observe. Um, that he just wanted the Israelites to be able to have a day that was separate, that was different from all the other days of what they were doing. Set aside a day just to worship him, just to be in awe of him. And really it was for their hearts just to be able to remember you know, God's goodness and God's kindness upon us. And I believe that he calls us into his rest even today. So let's turn to Hebrews chapter 4 in the New Testament. In Hebrews chapter 4, in verses 1 through 11, it says, Therefore, since the promise of entering his rest still stands, let us be careful that none of you be found to have fallen short of it. For we also have had the gospel preached to us just as they did. But the message they heard was of no value to them because those who heard did not combine it with faith. Now we who have believed entered, enter that rest just as God has said. So I declared on oath in my anger, they shall never enter my rest. And yet his work has been finished since the creation of the world. For somewhere he has spoken about the seventh day in these words. And on the seventh day, God rested from all his work. And again, in the passage above, he says, they shall never enter my rest. So it goes on, um, and I'll skip down to verse 11. It says, let us therefore make every effort to enter that rest so that no one will fall by following their example of disobedience. So, you know, what, what, um, the writer of Hebrews is talking about here is how the Israelites, how they didn't enter the promised land because they didn't trust God. You know, and we can look at that and think, oh, you know, like that's so sad. Like if only they had trusted, you know, and seeing that you know God has all this good for them. And yet the same is for us today that if we don't embrace this gift of Sabbath rest from God, that we too can miss out, that we will be missing out and not even realizing how much it's damaging our souls and our faith. Um, you know, I think about just this fast paced society that we're in this, you know, all about work, 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 production, consumer focused society. Um, I just think how much more important this message um, of Sabbath is. You know, it's mind blowing to me how this COVID pandemic has literally slowed down, if not shut down uh, the world in many, in many ways, you know, stopping us in our tracks by making us have to be still at home. Um, you know, I know that it has been a real change for me. I felt it like no rushing around, hectic paced days, you know, rushing the kids to school, picking them up, rushing them to practice, soccer practice, music lessons, hearing from one appointment to the next. I mean, I look back then, I think, wow, that was, that's pretty crazy, you know? And um, I think perhaps there's a big lesson from God to us to pay attention to in this time. And um, sisters, I just want to encourage you to be able to use this time to rest in God and let him restore your soul. Some of you I know are already, you know, have studied this and are practicing taking out a Sabbath day. I know for Risa and myself, you know, we really try to carve out Monday as our Sabbath day um, because the weekends can be so busy with appointments. Um, but we try to, you know, carve out Monday as our rest day. Um, to be able to rest in God, to be able to just have longer prayer walks, um, whatever we need to do. But we don't do it perfectly. You know, um, sometimes we get caught up in 
work as well. Um, but, you know, if this is new to you, then I just encourage you to just take baby steps, take small steps, you know, um, pray and ask God to be able to help you to find that time. You know, you can think of it like just having a date with God, you know, just being able to carve out um, a few hours. I mean, even if it's just an hour or two where you can just, you know, close your room, play some worship music, um, maybe even sleep, take a nap if that's what you need, um, go on a peaceful walk, you know, take deep breaths. I mean, that's something that I realized, wow, I've been so stressed that, you know, I started to just feel this tenseness physically in my chest. And I've had to be intentional about just learning how to take deep breaths and be able to let go and surrender to God. Um, so it does take being intentional. You know, you need to be creative. Um, I, I'm thinking of especially for the moms of little ones, you know, doing the best that you can while your little ones are taking naps. Um, you know, being able to go out on walks, you know, and look up at the sky, notice the trees, listen to the birds. Um, try to really just listen to God's voice. You know, what is he telling you? What is he calling you to? And, um, you know, again, you may not be able to take a whole day off, but even if it's even half a day or a few hours, I really believe that as we take small steps to trust God with our time and surrender to him, that he will bless it. He, he really does. And, um, you know, part of even um, Sabbath rest is maybe taking uh, or having a detox from technology and social media um, to be able to make room for God. You know, I know it's so easy on our phones where hours can go by as we're scrolling through Facebook or Instagram um, when really what we need is just solitude and quiet with God. So I hope that, you know, this helps you to grow into Sabbath living. And as you do, I pray that you will treasure your time with God and that you truly be able to enjoy your relationship with God. I want to close out in Hebrews 4 in verses 14 through 16 about Jesus as our high priest. In Hebrews 4, 14, it says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence, so that we may receive mercy and and find grace to help us in our time of need. You know, how comforting it is to know that we can approach the throne of God, the throne of grace with confidence because of our identity in Christ. You know, to remember that we are God's precious daughters, that nothing delights him more than to be able to spend time with you, to be able to hear from you. And as I said before, you know, this is just an intro to, you know, the Sabbath, but I hope that this encourages you. Um, sisters, remember that you are dearly loved by our Father, that He values you, and I hope that you will um, decide to trust God with your time and really embrace this gift of Sabbath from God. We need this rest to remember that God is the one who makes us holy, to remember that God is there to help us in our time of need. Um, you know, I've come to love that scripture, Micah 6, 8, you know, about just loving God's mercy. I'm like, I know more and more each day that I just need God's mercy. Um, and we really need this time of rest to be refueled with his love, with his joy, with his peace, so that we can continue the great work that we have ahead of us. You know, sisters, with all that we are called to do in this great time, we need more of God, not less. So I thank you so much for tuning in and listening. I love you. Please be safe and continue to love each other. Until next time. 
Thank you for joining us. I hope this has been educational and inspiring for you. If you'd like to know more, please join us by going to study.laicc.net and we'll be happy to contact you and help you in any way we can.